everybody. Welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Peterson, and today we are going to talk about culture. Uh, this is the one thing that in your business, if you don't have it, you will wish that you would, right? Because um, I've learned I've learned the hard way. Most of my life's lessons are usually on the hard side um, of what culture can do and, 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 and won't do if you don't have it, right? And as I've gotten older and more mature, I find that this culture piece, having something that's more than just uh, for you or about you, when you make it about your employees and the people that work for you, um, your culture is the driving force behind your growth. I know this and I believe it. So we are ramping up, building um, up new people and finding new people. And um, we've learned that, you know, let's just, well, let me do this. Let's back this up for a minute. Let's just talk about culture in general, right? So you have a culture in your company right now, whether you know it or you don't, right? And if you don't know it, then that is your culture. You have something where it's random and crazy. Everybody's doing their own thing and, and you may not have as much uh, control. In fact, you probably don't have control. And so what does it mean to have culture? I, I ask that a lot, you know, like, you, you know it when you see it, right? But here's the thing. I think you should be able to be able to share and talk about culture like you should be able to have proven um, things that sh that can define what your culture looks and feels like and so and I might give you an example I guess I'll use my company as an example of you know kind of what what we how we start culture so we have changed our interviewing process now where our first interview is 90% of us talking and we are talking about our culture. And we're probably saying things like, you're probably not a fit for our culture, um, you know, because here's how we play. Here's how we do, right? And we're going to start using really exam uh, big examples. And so um, we've also created a lot of what I would call um, just either infographics or words, you know, like, and the meanings behind the words, and then you can tell a story behind those words as well to drive that culture. And so culture can be created. It absolutely can. I know this for a fact. And, but you have to have either it's, you, you know, in the beginning, maybe it's just you and your, you, your vision, but you've got to write these things down and then you got to start and you have to mean it. You have to have like, these are the things of who we are and then you've got to repeat them almost weekly or daily or have ways to drive, you know, that culture piece home that describes who we are and then how we're going to get better and how we're, how we're going to improve and what does our team do? Who are they? And so um, I'll share with you. So we, we created some things. Uh, first of all, we created just our core value. So sometimes people will say well you know oh i got my core values so i have culture or i have here's my logo right and so this is who we are and a lot of times that really doesn't equate to a whole hill of beans right so what happens is people think they have culture um because i you know i've got some core values and then you see those core values and then there's there's no story behind it right there's no like, if that's all you have and that's that's it, then well, what's left, right? Is there anything, is there anything that means something? And most of the times, I feel like a lot of people just they don't have that. They don't have. It really is. It gets it gets really shallow. And so a lot of times, what happens is your culture just runs flat. It just it doesn't. It doesn't mean anything because you've got some written core values, but what does that mean? And if there's not stories behind that where you can really demonstrate what that really means, um, your culture is going to fall flat. So I'll give an example of kind of what we've done and, and how we've created it. And hopefully that some sh shed some light. Now, 
we're very lucky in that we have this really cool name for our company, Kahuna Investments. And even with Kahuna Investments, how we got that name, the story behind it is really powerful. So for for those of you who have never heard my origin story, I'm going to give it to you real shortly. But um, 22 years ago, I always say my life changed forever. I went to Hawaii uh, with uh, my girlfriend, now my wife of 22, 20 years. And we uh, I met my first mentor. His name was Bruce. I call him Bruce Wayne. Okay. Now, Bruce... Uh, he was a Batman, but we do call him Bruce Wayne because he was loaded. Bruce had a lot of money. And he had a house right on the beach. And I remember going, my mom was married to him. And so we got to stay at this beach house right on the ocean. And it was amazing. And I remember walking the cove and watching the sun come up one day. And I looked over at his house and I was like, oh my gosh, what, is, what does Bruce do for a living? Because he was living like no other. And he had time and money. That's really, really had time and money. The two things I think we most want and covet is time and money, both of those things together. And so Bruce had it unequivocally. And so I asked him, I was like, dude, what do you do? And then he said the magic words. He said, man, I'm in real estate. I own apartments. And I left the island thinking that Bruce was the big kahuna. Six months later, I read the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I knew right then that that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like Bruce. I wanted to be the big Kuna. So in 2005, I uh, was thinking about my, you know, a company, creating my company, and what to name it, and I, all I could think about was Bruce being the big Kuna, and so I called it Kahuna Investments. Now, that's been almost 16 years ago, and you know we've got a really neat journey how we start with single family. Um, you know, wholesaling to, you know, to maybe doing uh, fix and flips or raising our first piece of private money to doing it really at a bigger scale and then to ultimately finding apartment investing. And that's all we've been doing ever since. And so it's a really great story and brand. And the thing about the Kahuna name is that then we get to use a lot of Hawaiian and which is what, what is what I passionate about is living what I call that sunsets and palm trees lifestyle and then trying to create a culture around that that really is I think who I am and 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 the kind of people that we've that we have found and we've been able to use a lot of Hawaiian I'll call it pigeon words right Hawaiian pigeon uh, because I, lo I love it. I love the way it feels and I love the way it works so I'll start with this so so we started though with our you know we had a cool name Kuna Investments um, and people and I know that it's sticky and good because people a lot of times they never remember my name but they'll always remember the big Kahuna oh that's that's Corey that's Kahuna and so that that works and that works for me I'm great with that um, and then we started putting you know first of all we started well what's our mission right what is our our mission for our company what does our company really do and so we just finally, we put some words behind that. That was our first step, which was at Kahuna Investments, we partner with passive investors to create award-winning apartment communities families are proud to call home, right? So boom, that was like, okay, now that's something we can all get behind. What do we do? A, we have passive investors. We create award-winning apartment communities that families, people, like right? So that's kind of people love to, are, are proud proud to call home not just you know but are proud to call home so that's the in that statement there's a lot of who we are identity right what do we stand for so we started there then we started we created our core values right so all core values and i'm going to go to each core values core values that we have and then I'll, I'll give you some stories behind it so this is in my mind how we've kind of started to create and tell our Kahuna story to our employees. And we'd usually do this on a weekly, right? So when we do our weekly level 10 meetings, we'll pick out one of our core values, or sometimes we'll, we have another thing that we use, which is called the, the kind attitudes that we use to talk about um, our people and things that happen within our company. And I find that when the more we, we reinforce what we're doing and how we're doing it um, and why it means something, people want to be, part of something that's bigger than just making money, 
right? And so, and I've learned as I've gotten older that in my company, I used to do things because I wanted to succeed. I wanted to be the boss. I wanted to be, I, it was, it was all about me. And honestly, quite lately, the last couple of years, I've really started to change that mentality that it's not about me anymore. It's about my team. How do I help my team? How do I help the people that work for me get more, have more, do more? And when I, when I focus on them, man, that, that just makes a world difference. It changes your attitude. It changes your heart. And it changes the way you play the game. So our next step was we created our core values, right? And so our core values that we have are people, excellence, moxie, and integrity. And so those are, you know, four pillars that we will hire and fire for. And I'll go over each one of them with you just to kind of give it a little bit of, uh, again, some more story behind it and why that's important and what it means. So with people, so I think we'll talk about people in general. Then I think me as a company, I'm really talking to my people mainly, my, my staff. I want to let my people, like, we're about people. And really, all kinds, of, we have people that live at our properties. We have our investors that are people. And we also have my staff, like my real team members. I think a lot of companies never put, they always say, who, who do we affect? And they're always looking at their customer, but they don't always look internal and say, well, what about us? What about the people on our team? And so we want to include our people, meaning Kahuna Investments employees, on that people piece. That we, we not only need to do it good for the people that we serve and make money for and, and the people that live at our properties, but if we're not doing it for our staff and the people that work for us, then we're doing it wrong. And so people focus means that you care that you'll send um, thank you cards, that you reward good behavior. You um, you just do little things, man. Like, you just love on your people, you know? And I feel like that's that's what, that's what primarily my job. But when I do it, then I find that my employee-to-employee -employee reactions do it as well. Um, and that they'll love on each other. And they'll say thank you. And they'll, and they'll give attaboys and attagirls and really a uh, champion within our community where it's not just coming from me. Now, I think I lead it, but I don't think I, but our goal is to let us know that it's about people. And then also um, how we interact with our people, our investors. Do we, you know, can we call them? Do we talk to them? Um, you know, are we, are we helpful? Do we want to go out of our way to make sure that they have everything that they need? They're not just an email. And so that's really important. And then also to the properties that we serve, uh, ultimately, you know, we want to do right by, by our, uh, our people that live in our communities. And so uh, I feel like it's, it's a really big piece of who we are. And so that people component to me is probably the most important. So we talk about what we do for people. We talk about how we care about our staff, right? Integrity. So integrity is one of those pillars in our in our business, the syndication business. You got to have integrity. You just have to. And and what does that mean? Doing the right thing, even when we're wrong, or even when we're right, and but the customer thinks we're wrong. So I'll give an example. Man, we had um, an ACH problem where man, we'd ask I think two, maybe three times for this the ACH information. And the customer gave us gave it to us right, but we had duplicate versions, and one was wrong, and we used it to upload it into our uh, system, and so a check got cut to his uh, personal account instead of his IRA, and so um, you know we would, could have said, hey, let's let's get that money back, and then we'll cut a new check to the IRA. We'll correct the problem. It was like, no, listen, we're that's our, that's on us, right? It was like, I don't know, 1500 bucks wasn't a lot of money, but um, the right thing to do was to have integrity and know that this was our screw up, so we should own it. And sometimes that's what you got to do. You just got to own, own your mistakes. And so we did. And so uh, to me, we can give examples of what that means, right? 
and integrity, doing the right things. When we've got important milestones going on, we have integrity that we'll work longer, extra hours if we have to, to make sure that we're taking care of our people, right? And that's what our people do, and they know that. They, they're like, hey, listen, this is my responsibility. I'm, 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 I own it. And sometimes it's, always, it's not always nine to five. Um, but they know that, but they take a lot of pride in taking care of that. And then when I see it, and when our staff sees it, and people see it, we reward that behavior, right? Um, we let them know that we see it. I think that's important. Let you know, let them know that you saw it. I think that's more important in, than ever is to say those things and let, you know, I'm telling you right now, the uh, handwritten letter is so powerful when you're looking at your staff. If you're not writing hand letter, handwritten letters to your staff, you got to, you have to let them know and do, and don't just write some bull crap letter. Let them like feel it. Put some feels in that letter. Let them know that you care. And people will move mountains for you. Talk about excellence, right? We just want to we want to do excellent work. Right? We want to we want to do it with high level of accuracy. Now, we're not always perfect. You know, we still make mistakes. Every company does, but we clean them up, right? And we get better. Um, and then my last one's Moxie. And we put Moxie in there because I believe that's like that special sauce that you bring to a table. We love flair. We love people that have um, just more than just a robot, right? You have Moxie. You have something special that you bring to the equation that's uniquely you. And we want that. We want your special, right? And we want you to bring it. And so... Um, that's why I love our, that's our core values. And that's what I really love about that piece is that it, all of that stuff means something. And then there's really stories to tell about when show, someone showed their moxie, right? We can, we can tell stories of staff. I can tell stories of staff that have done that. And it's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And it means something to them. So I think that's, to me, more importantly now, as we, we really start to get into business and growth and people it is vitally important that you have these things in place because it will it will really um, propel you into your growth of where you want to go i already know this year we're going to do more business than we've ever done and it's because i'm getting out of the way finally and it's taken a little bit of time for me to realize that i'm the biggest block in this business it really is and so as I get out and I create bigger and better culture, my goal, so I, I read this book, uh, it's called The CEO Does Three Things by Trey, I think, Trey, Trey Taylor. Had to go look at the book. <laughs> CEO Does Three Things. Great book, by the way. Highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend that book. But it talks about, you know, CEO Does Three Things. What are those three things? Uh, people, culture, and numbers. That's it. That's what you should be doing. If you want to be the CEO, that's what you should be doing. So we've been really working on that culture piece. And so the next thing that we created was, so read another book. Um, actually, no, I, I took this from, I ripped this exactly from CEO Does Three Things. He was talking about his culture, and he had what's called the B attitudes, right? And it's taken kind of from the Bible. The Bible has a, you know, the, what's called the Beatitudes. If you can Google that in the Bible, you can look at the Bible and, and check on, on the Beatitudes. And he did that for his company. Well, but we didn't want to be rip it like that. That's, you know, we're not trying to plagiarize, but it was a great concept. And I was like, man, we got to make something that's kahuna style. And so we called it the Dekine Attitudes, right? And really, uh, so this is what we created was a little uh, piece Um and we look at it every team meeting. We talk about, and we kind of go through the words and what it means. And we try to give, uh, we'll have one employee give an example of someone that's displayed one of these attitudes during the week. And so they can um, just kind of reference it. It's kind of fun to do. So we say, uh, we created this little piece that says, the Kahuna culture can be described as very unique and inspiring. Our people display our attitudes all the time we recognize the value and give praise when we see it. And I, I think that, that little part there, we recognize the value and give praise when we see it. 
man, if you see one of your staffs doing something that's part of your core values and, and you can try to give like immediate recognition if you can. I mean, gosh dang, that's so powerful. Man, I just heard you say that. That was awesome. That was really cool. Great job. You know, and so our first thing of of the Dekine attitudes is the first one is be Dekine, right? So Dekine in um, Hawaiian kind of pidgin is meaning, uh, meaning uh, you know, uniquely uh, special, the kind, right? And it's a way to describe almost anything like, Hey man, yeah, you know that that pin, yo, it's the kind, like it's special, it's it, or and so we wanted to say, be you, you be the kind, <laughs> you are special, be that, be that special person, and be it, right? Um, the kind, it, it's so powerful, meaning just go out and be you and be it and be awesome. I love it. Our next one is uh, give them, give them, bro, right? Uh, try your best. Go for it. Don't give up. Uh, you know, if you're on the beach and you were riding some waves, you'd have some some uncle saying, bro, give them, bro. Give them. And why not, right? Go out there and go go face what you got to face and go for it, man. Uh, don't give up. Uh, spread aloha, right? Love and affection. The breath of life. The essence of life. That's who we are as people. We want to spread aloha. We want to, we want to be kind, generous, um, very, um, just real, authentic. And if we can do that in our everyday business lives, when we interact with people, that's going to mean something, right? And then be ohana, right? Family. In our business, we want everybody to be family. That's how we want to look at you as part of our family. And uh, no one gets left behind, right? Everybody has a voice. No one's too big or too small. And we think that's important. And then give choke praise. Give choke praise. Choke is a lot of or bunch of, right? So we were just in Hawaii. Maybe we had choke beers. <laughs> but uh, in our company, we want to give choke praise. Like when we see people doing good stuff, Man, stop and, and let them know. Let them know how appreciative. If someone gave you some help or, or pitched in or did some stuff, that's what we want to talk about. That's the good stuff. And we do it all the time. And we really try to um, make sure we drive this one home. And then my, my last one, which is my favorite, and we talk about this all the time, make it mo better. We want to make our stuff mo better, right? <laughs> Better than, even better, no comparison. We are always striving to make our company mo better, right? With mo better people, with mo better systems, with mo better processes. And that's what we've kind of, you know, as you grow a company, you start, you know, from something and, and then you kind of get to a place and you hit a ceiling and then you've got to break through that ceiling. And when you break through, usually you're going to have some things that are going to get broken along the way. And you got to readjust and, you know, the things you're doing when you're doing a small business are, are different from when you're in a medium sized business and definitely different when you're going into a, a larger size business. And as you keep growing, your systems and needs and people change. And so that's something we've learned along the way. And as we continue to grow and add staff and people and systems and processes to our company, um, more importantly, we know that it's our culture that is really the the thing that ties us all together. And so I'll leave it with that. I just wanted to talk about culture for a little bit. I, I just came from Hawaii, was there for like seven or eight, ten days. And man, I, I just get refreshed and renewed. And I know that um, our company is destined to do great things and the people in it are amazing. Um, we're still, we still have a couple different positions that we're looking for. Um, so we're still hiring for our COO, trying to find that magic person for that position. Um, and then we're going to be hiring an asset manager next and a financial advisor. So we still have three spots that we're looking for. We just filled our, uh, um, latest, uh, role in our, in our finance department. So really excited about that, but, um, we, we're growing and as we continue to grow, um, 
Our people are more important than ever. Guys, whatever you're doing today, I just hope that you're having a great day, that you have taken this episode and learned from some of these, uh, these, these pieces and that you can take that design or that framework and go out and make your business mo better, right? Guys, if you believe it, you can achieve it and your paradise is possible.